Hello and welcome back to another Python video. In this video we'll be going over how to make a noughts and crosses game using AI. So this sort of AI we're going to be using is using a graph data structure. Now you may have come across graph data structures before. They use vertexes which represent information and edges to connect them up. So in this case we're going to have uh, vertices which will be the coordinates. So we might have 1, 1, so on a grid, where 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then if we went here and here and here, that's a whim. Or if we went here and here and here, that's a whim. So we might have 1, 1, then 2, 2, then 3, 3, and that is a whim. So that links up. And the algorithm would find that the fastest pathway when I'm here to a whim is going to be the next step 2 2 and we want the AI to block us so then it will go there but then of course if we've taught it so that if it goes to then uh, 2 1 and 3 1 um, that's a win again so if I start going here it will need to block me because it knows the next time the next move is going to win and the more you play of it the more it will learn so that's the principle so here I am in the Python IDE now, if we see here, I've included tic-tac-toe, import tic-tac-toe. So that's just some code I wrote um, stored in the same file. And I also wrote the graph. So from graph, import graph and edge. Um, and then I've imported random, which is an inbuilt library. This is some basic code, which highlights just the way the code works. So I can uh, play... Um, there we go and victory to me so it will just let you play one game but we obviously want to take that further and have an AI so let's get rid of this so we've got game equals tic-tac-toe and we'll do player equals graph so the, we're just going to store the players then what we'll do we'll go round and round so we'll just have a counter we'll have a used to um, store just use data um, which we might not end up using, we'll see. Um, then while true, print, oops, print, round, uh, capitalize that, round, and plus str count plus one. We'll start from zero, although we could just start at one, to be honest. Let's, let's do that. Um, so that's going to print round one, round two, round three, once I... Uh, there you go. So that's just going to increase the round. But what we want to do is do game dot display board. So that's just an inbuilt fe uh, an inbuilt feature of the tic tac toe game. Um, so it's just going to show the board. Then we'll do last move. Last move because we want to store the last move of the user. So this is going to be start uh, to start off with. We want a start node to say this is where it starts and this is where it ends, and hopefully being win. Um, player pause equals um, because there's no player pause. We want this to just accumulate all the different players that they've um, sorry the places that they've been, and we're going to have off. So this is off limits. Um, this is going to be all the positions currently taken. So the AI doesn't pick something which has already been uh, used. Sorry, my um, printer's going a bit mad. Okay, so, while not and game.win, don't want it to um, exit this until it's either won or it has um, drawn. Um, so let's just get draw. And once again, these are just inbuilt features from the code that I wrote uh, for the tic-tac-toe game. So uh, x equals int input, um, and we want the x coordinate, y equals y uh, int input, and we want the y coordinate. So let's just have a look at that. Round one, 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 two, two, one, two, one. So as you get the picture. Now what we'll do is enter that into value equals um, game dot move and then we'll put y and x. 
Right, so this will then enter it in. But of course, if you write something which has already been taken up, so it will return false, then we'll print invalid move. So this isn't an error where you have to worry about too much because it's um, just inbuilt features, but the main bit will be the graph being added in for learning. So if not game dot win and not game dot get draw. Um, so that means that the move was valid, but it hasn't won the game yet because we don't want it to then look for the AIs. So this is going to be get AI turn. And we're not going to want to do that if it's won. Um, so we'll get back to that. I'll just put that in so I can get the indentations. Um, so then we're going to have an else. So this is if uh, the game has been won. We'll want it to add the last player position. So this is the graph. So player, which is our graph, dot add. And then we are going to um, also add directed because we want it to be directed from one to another using directed edges. Um, then we're going to create an edge. So an edge just has the two vertices. Um, so what we want to have is last move um, at zero um, because we haven't yet set. So that's the last move which happened in the round before. And then we're going to have um, as strings x and then plus and then we're going to have a string for y. So in simple terms what this does it adds a node to the um well, it adds two nodes to the graph and connects them by this edge and the edge will contain its own strength and all sorts of variables but we're not going to use any of them we're just simply going to add this to the graph so going back to our diagram what happens is we have a node and then a link between those nodes right so what we're going to get on and do now is make the um, AI, AI's turn. So we want it, if it's valid, um, we want it to add it like what we've done down here. So let's just get that put up here to save us writing anything new. But we don't need to change anything because we're once again just adding the last move which happened and the X and Y which has just been entered in and we link last move with the new move. Um, but then we want to change that. So next time, last move is going to be what just happened here. So it's going to be that. And then we'll have player pause. So that's the position dot append last move. And we just want to make an accumulative amount of moves that the player has made. So this means that when we the AI can search for all the possible moves which could be made and the quickest route to a win. Um, now the graph structure does get a bit confused because we're just adding nodes and we're not adding any more information. So it can get a bit confused and it won't always win, but it does come back around and think, oh, he's doing this a lot at the moment, so I'm going to change it um, and try and win. So it all sounds a bit confusing, but uh, hear me out. Um, so value equals false. This is just going to be something we're going to use later on, which is making it false. This is going to gather the possibilities and size equals. Um, that's going to be really big because we want to get the smallest size, the shortest route to a win. So for i in player pos, so this is going to loop through all the different um, possibilities. Eval dot player, so that's the graph. Um, dot shortest route. So this is just a method within the graph to find the shortest route between i, and so that's going to be the node, and we want to get to win. And then we're going to include off. So that represents the off limits, uh, what's not going to be used within. Um, so that's going to be all the different, if I've gone in 1-1, one, one, it's going to have 1-1 one, one in that, so I don't pick a path which takes 1-1, one, one, otherwise I'm just wasting processing or possibly the AI will come up with a result which isn't correct. We don't want that. We want it to pick a move which is valid. So 
moving on from that, we'll have if val, so that's the, or sorry, that should be value equals player. Um, so if val is not equal to none, so that means that there is a valid path and the length of val is less than size. So we want it to be the shortest possible answer and win uh, in val in its last position. We don't want it just to loop to some random thing. Um, then what we can do is do next equals val. So this is going to be the array of possible outcomes and then size equals length of val. So now it's going to be looking for something which is shorter than what it's currently found. So then we can put here next. So that's just going to print to us so we can just see the thought process of the AI. Now we want to check if this next, so if it's blank, so it hasn't found anything, or it's a win. Um, so we don't want it to try and just do win as a move because that's not a valid move and neither is having blank. So in this case, when it's confused or doesn't know what to do, we're going to have, oops, uh, well, value equals false. So that was what we had up here. Um, and I said, you don't need to worry about for now. But what we're going to do is while it's false and game dot win is not equal to true and game dot oh, draw oh no get draw is not uh, not equal to true. So what we did up here basically, but I use not equal instead of just not. So what then we'll do here is we'll get x and y equals random dot rand int um, between one and three. Then we'll just do the same again. So that's gonna get our x and y coordinates. So it's gonna randomly guess um, what to do because it's confused. Um, so game dot move and then y and x. And I've got this little loop here because if it picks a random number which is currently there, it's just going to keep looping until it makes the right decision. Um, because if it just like exits after making a move and then getting a return of false on the value because it's not a real move, we're going to have complications. So then here we can write computer random move just so we know when it's doing a random move and when it's not. And then we'll do x. Um, um, and then y. That's going to just tell us what the coordinates are and if it's doing a random move. Otherwise, if it's not a random move, then we want to get the val equals. And remember that it's going to be in the format um, returning just x, y as a string. So we want to split the. Um, so we'll do next stop and we'll do one because that's going to be the position after the one we just entered in. Um, so split at the comma and then we'll do y equals int value at one and x equals int val oh, damn, the value at zero. Right, there we are. So then we can just print computer move and then we'll do um, the exact same as up here and then of course we will make the move while you dot and we know that it's going to be a valid move because um, we've gone through this entire process and also put in that off limits um, and we're going to gather each of the positions which it's not allowed to do um, throughout uh, we'll get to that in a minute though. So game dot move y x. Then down here we'll do the last move um, at, of the AI. We don't really use this, but um, like in the processing, but we just add it in in case we want to change it in the future. Then we do off dot append, and that's going to be the last move at one. Uh, I could have just put that in there, but. Um, storing both moves. So going on from there, we're going to have it so it's been making moves. Um, but of course, it's not going to 
get to a win yet. So let's move down here and um, sorry, go back here. And then we want to display the board game dot um, display board. So we want to show it that the AIs move and the humans move. And the AIs move is going to be instant because um, it's uh, a very short algorithm. And once you've exited, so this means that you've either won or drawn. We'll check if it's a game dot get draw. If it is, then print draw. And if it's not, then we'll print um, a victory two. And then we'll have game dot get winner. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on how to make a tic tac toe game. Um, so it's up to you if you want to go and have a look. This is just one I wrote. You don't really need to worry about the commands. I'll link it all in the description below. Um, but here, this is when it's going to get interesting. So if game um, dot get winner equals equals and we want an X. So if the player wins, which you're playing as the X um, player, then we're going to have player dot add direct. Ooh, directed and then we're going to have edge and we'll have last move at zero and win so this is going to link the last move to a win so then we've got count equals zero and then a game dot reset at each time oops that should be a double equals Okay, so let's have a look at this. If you do one one, it makes a random move to one two. So I go to two two, and I go to three three, and I've won because all its random moves were wrong. But now if I go there again, it's got a computer move because it has gone to that position, knowing oh well that's going to lead to a win. So I'm going to go for a different win. If I go there again. If I do two one, it blocked me as you can see. Computer random move to three one here. And it's also blocked me here because it knows that's a possible win. So I haven't programmed it to try and win. I've programmed it to try and block me to be annoying. Um, so if I do one, two, and one, three, I've won again. Um, so um, it's learned that as uh, in relation to the others. So if I keep doing this method, oh look, and then it's blocked me. It's learned that one, two links to one, three, which is a win. So it's gone there. So as you can see, it will just learn to block you. The more you do it though, obviously the quicker routes it finds the winning, it gets a bit confused, but then it just relearns uh, and reassesses its nodes. Um, so that's what I was, uh, I've been working on. Um, and I'll link all the codes in the description for download. I hope you enjoyed and um, let me know if you want to see anything in the future. Um, and yeah, have a nice day.